How's it going guys? Welcome back to another episode of How to CMake. We're working on the same project we did before. I want to review the previous episodes if you have no idea what's going on or no idea what CMake is. Because we're now up to CPAC. And CPAC is just another way to install that is a little more kosher, I guess a little better for the non-technical user. Because it basically packages everything up and does what it needs to do to get it installed. And this works on every OS. I'm using Linux here, so I'm going to have to show you some screenshots of how it looks on Windows and Mac, because that's where it really shines. That, yeah, okay, so like people usually want the little installer thing, and that walks them through, and they press next or whatever, and uh, they have the uninstall option too later if they decide they want, don't want your software. That's what CPAC does. So we're going to go to our CMakeList.txt, the top level one in our project, and all we need to do is add these five lines at the bottom. Well, I guess the other thing is we need to add a license. This whole include here, include uh, install required system libraries, set the CPAC uh, resource file license to your license. So I did add a license.txt. Uh, it just needs to match this name, whatever you add. So at this point, you do want a license, and that will display to your user while they're installing it and make them agree to it. You also need your major and minor version of the software, and then last but not least, include CPAC. And that is it. You just need that on your top level along with that license. So that's the only changes we've made since last time is we added these five lines and we added this license, which I did. <laughs> As you can see, is not a real license in my, my case. I'm just goofing around and I don't feel like going and putting and figuring out what license should be with this. So that's all, all I put. All right, but I'm going to put a new line at the end of this. And... As you can see here, it's already running CMake. So I'm using Visual Studio Code here, and it's got, and I've got the extension. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I've got the extension for CMake tools, the main Microsoft one, and that automatically runs and builds everything anytime I make changes to CMake. So it is going ahead and doing its stuff, and it looks like it did everything successfully, and it is happy, configured, and generated so that's why that's automatically happening. I was using, in the previous episodes, I was using these sh files. And if you like those, you can continue to use them. But the CMake tools is just making my life easy. Okay, so now what do we do? Now, if you look at the documentation on CPAC, it basically tells you at this point, okay, when you're ready, you run CPAC. But you do have to be in your build directory. Because if I run it on my root directory or the project root directory, it just says generator not specified. So I do have to change directory into build and then run CPAC. And then it does this thing. This plain old CPAC just uses all your defaults and it builds, well for Linux, what it builds is a tar.gz. And it also builds a tar.z. So those are very similar, it just depends which one you want to use. So what you could do from here is let me look in this file directory again and you'll see that now there are these. These are basically the installers. It's got this sh thing. So I believe all I have to do if I want to install this on Linux is I just go and run this sh file. So dot slash to run it, hit the button, and there it goes. It starts the installer for Linux and it has you accept with a yes or no. Here's the license, of course. Don't tread on me, Snake. So I'm going to accept the license. And here he asked me some more questions. So these are the prompts you get for an install on Linux through command line. It's a little different. I'll show you what it looks like on Windows, but it's essentially the same thing. It takes you through prompts as you install it. Okay, so if you distribute these files to someone else, it's gonna it's probably gonna build them somewhere else. So I'm just gonna say yes here. And there it goes. Unpacking finished successfully. Let's check. It looks like there is a new directory here, right there. So we are going to check that out. Let's change directory into it and take a look in it and we see a bin include live and share. So we'll change directory into that bin and we'll see our main program there. And we should be able to just run it here. Let's do a dot slash. And there it is, it runs. So wherever they decide to install those two will run. So if you're doing this on Windows or Mac, It'll be the exact same steps, except you don't have to do the command line stuff. You'll actually get a little executable installer that's all packed up, and it'll look more like this. So if you're on Windows, this is a super old one. But basically, it'll it'll give you this little 
pop-up walkthrough that you're used to seeing when you install a Windows program. And people that aren't super technical that want to use your software will love this because they can just double-click the thing and uh, get all your options and just install your software. And same with Mac. Now this is a bit of an old bit of documentation here, so it might be a little bit different, but the, the big thing is it just pops up a window and prompts them through it. And another cool thing is they get the option to uninstall it. So if they want to uninstall your software, it, it pops up the uninstall thing for Windows and they can just uninstall it and they're done. They don't need to know about all this technical stuff of how to compile, build, where to find it, how to change directory. They just run the thing and it's done. So it's just uh, even a better way of installing your software. Um, of course, Linux stays a little technical. It's not super technical. I mean, you can look up about tar GZ and, and unzipping and unpacking and stuff. But basically, if we like, let's look at this little sh file that it built, and we'll see that basically what it does is just unpack this stuff and prompt a bunch of options. Uh, here it is. It has a usage, has some more functions. And yeah, this is a lot of stuff. I'm not going to walk through all of this, but basically it just goes through and does all the stuff you would expect. It tells you things as a self-extracting archive, and eventually somewhere in here it will unzip. So we'll, we'll just search for tar and see where it does that. Here it is. So there's the command with XF. So yeah, it eventually it prompts you through a bunch of stuff and then it just extracts. You could literally, if you don't, if you want to skip through all this and you're super technical, you could just unzip these to where you want them to go. If you're not super technical, you can just run. You can just tell your user, hey, just run dot slash this sh thing, and the rest will be prompted, and you'll be good to go. So there you go. I don't. Whoa, what's all this? Oh, this is the <laughs> tar gz file packed in here. That's really weird. I didn't realize they did that. All right. Well, let's skip that. That's. Don't worry about that. Alright, so that's it. That's the very, very basics of adding CPAC in the main required things. Now, if you if you want to go further with CPAC and maybe you're doing this for like a super professional application, I would recommend digging into a little more documentation on CPAC or maybe just finding some more advanced stuff. But everything else is really optional and really special case. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll see you guys in the next one. And keep on coding, keep on using CMake because it's awesome. And I'll see you in the next episode.